Uh, welcome to the second lecture of 10th module. Uh, we have been discussing uh, uh, some design examples of uh, design of components made of FRP uh, composites. And in our last lecture, uh, we have discussed design of a thin cylindrical pressure vessel made of FRP composites. Today, we will discuss uh, two more examples where we will understand that uh, how, what are the steps in actually design of uh, components made of laminated FRB composites. So, uh, the first example, I mean this is example 2, first example, uh, I mean example 1 we have already done in the last class. Uh, we have one uh, 10 by 10 uh, centimeter aluminum plate which is used in an electronic device to withstand a pure bending of 1 kilo Newton meter with a factor of safety of 2. Thickness of the aluminum plate is 25 millimeter. Now, I, I think uh, you can see that's, that in this figure, this is a typical uh, aluminum board, I mean board where some components in an electric device are actually mounted, therefore it experiences bending. And now, uh, what the, in this problem, the thickness of the plates needs to be reduced uh, same, at least by 50 percent. That means, initially this is 25 mm, we need to reduce it by 50 percent. Why? To accommodate some additional uh, hardware. Therefore, uh, how we do this? Uh, maybe we will use FRP uh, laminates. So, it is graphite epoxy or glass epoxy is made available. So, we can design the same plate using either graphite epoxy or glass epoxy instead of aluminum and thereby reduce the thickness. Of course, we will also see how much weight savings we get from this. Okay? Now, it is given that uh, the cost of uh, glass epoxy is less of course, graphite epoxy is almost 2.5 times higher compared to that of uh, glass epoxy. So, we will have to design this for maximum weight saving and of course, minimizing the cost. Okay? So, the properties are given that properties of unidirectional glass epoxy lamina, unidirectional graphite epoxy lamina and aluminum are given and the thickness of ply is 0.125 mm. Okay? So, basically we have uh, this plate which is made of aluminum, okay. its thickness is 25 mm and there are components in it, so that it actually experiences a bending moment okay. and uh, its size is 10 centimeter that is 100 mm by 100 mm. Okay. And its thickness is 25 mm. Okay, so, we need to uh, design this using FRP laminates. Okay. So, to start with, let us first see that the aluminum uh, plate. Okay. So, the, the properties of aluminum are given. Now, we know that subjected to bending that the maximum bending stress is bending moment by second area moment into T by 2. This is m by i into y like suppose I am drawing the side view this is T. Okay. and this is the cross section. B T. Okay. So, I is equal to B T cube by 12 okay. uh, and uh, in this case M is equal to M is given as 1 kilo Newton meter. 1 kilo Newton meter. Therefore, uh, considering a factor of safety given that the factor of safety is 2. So, considering a factor of safety is equal to 2, the design moment is equal to 2 into 1 kilo Newton 
meter. Okay. So, we can write this in, uh, in terms of uh, millimeter also. So, 2 into 1 kilo Newton means 1000 Newton into Newton millimeter. Okay. Now, given that uh, allowable, I mean, I mean the uh, maximum stress, the strength of the aluminum is given as I think 270, 270 strength of the aluminum is given as 270. Therefore, uh, this is 270 mega Pascal means Newton millimeter square. Okay. Therefore, since it is a ductile material, therefore, yield point stress could be taken as half of this. So, 135 Newton per millimeter square. Therefore, in this case sigma is equal to 2 into this is the bending moment divided by I 100 into T is 25 cube by 12 into 25 by 2. So, this gives us a bending moment of uh, 192 Newton per millimeter square. Okay. Therefore, uh, now this is a one dimensional stress bending stress. Therefore, the uh, maximum you know the maximum shear stress is nothing but uh, sigma 1 sigma by 2. Therefore, this is 96 Newton per millimeter square okay. and this is clearly less than 135 Newton per millimeter square. Therefore, this is safe. Okay. So, this aluminum plate is safe just to understand the design steps because we will be following the same thing when we come for uh, when we go for design with FRP composites. Okay. Now, this is with aluminum. Okay. This is done with aluminum. Now, we need to uh, modify the design. Now, we need to modify the design and the constraint is that the thickness should be less than at best it could be 12.5 mm. It, it could be at best 12.5 mm. Now, suppose we choose suppose we choose graphite epoxy okay, plate made from say all 0 degree lamina. Okay. And the dimension is lateral dimensions remain same 100 mm into 100 mm and uh, what will be the thickness? Now, for T is equal to 12.5 mm you need 100 lamina. Why? Because since each lamina thickness is 0.125 mm. Okay. Therefore, the laminate is we have 100 0 degree layer graphite epoxy. Okay. Now, this is this needs to withstand a bending moment of subjected to m is equal to 2 into 
2 into uh, this uh, 10 to the power uh, 6 Newton millimeter 2 into 10 to the power uh, yeah 1000 into 10 to the power 3 Newton millimeter okay therefore uh, in terms of uh, therefore mx which is the in classical lamination theory this is the moment per unit width is nothing but m by 100 therefore this is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 4 newton millimeter per millimeter or it could you can write this as just newton okay the moment resultant unit of moment resultant is uh, Newton meter per meter or Newton millimeter per millimeter that means it is Newton. Okay. So, therefore, the problem is now that you have a laminate you have a laminate what is this laminate this is 0, 100 graphite epoxy and this is subjected to only m x 2 into 10 to the power 4 Newton or you can write Newton millimeter per millimeter same thing. All other forces are 0. Okay. So, this is now we will have to analyze this laminate which is a 100 layer graphite epoxy laminate okay. 100 layer all 0 degree 100 layer graphite epoxy laminate and we will have to see that subjected to m x is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 4 Newton whether it is safe or not. Okay. Now, how we do this? We have done it number of times using classical lamination theory. Okay. So, we have the for graphite epoxy, for graphite epoxy lamina we have the properties are given E 1, E 2, nu 1 to G 1 to as well as the thickness of each ply is given as well as the thickness of each ply is given okay for graphite epoxy this is 180 gpa e2 is 10 gpa it is given in this table okay nu12 is 0.3 g12 is 7 gpa and ply thickness is 0.125 mm so for this we can immediately calculate from this we can calculate q matrix okay from the q matrix we can calculate a b d okay because this is what we need we need q matrix for each layer okay in this case all are zero degree layers and we need thickness of each ply and the stacking sequence of course here it's a symmetric therefore this is zero okay so we have abbd matrix so now using B is of course zero. I am just writing for the sake of completeness. So in this case, in the load vector N M, all the elements except M X are zero. 
Okay. So, all the elements are 0 except m x here b is 0 and we have the values for a and d and therefore, we can actually find out what is the mid surface strain in this particular laminate subjected to only moment m x mid surface strain will be 0 of course, because it is symmetric laminate and there will be curvatures k x, k y, k x y. You can calculate the curvatures. Okay. This is because it is symmetric laminate, because symmetric laminate subjected to only m, therefore, there is no strain. Okay. Now, knowing this, we can calculate, knowing this, we could calculate, we could calculate the strains in all the layers. How? We know that in any layer k, the strain is Of course, in this case epsilon x naught, epsilon y naught, gamma x y naught are 0 and for this laminate, we have the stacking sequence. Here all the layers are 0 degree layers. There are 50 layers above, 50 layers below the reference plane and therefore, we can find out in all the layers, uh, all the lamina wh what are the strains. Okay? So, knowing these strains, we can and jk is the distance of uh, of that lamina from the reference plane or the mid surface okay so knowing the strains we can calculate what is the stress In this case, of course, q bar and q is same because all the layers are 0 degree layers and from there we can find out what are the material axis stress in all the layers. Again, in this case they are same because it is 0 degree, but just for the sake of completeness I am writing uh, sigma x sigma y tau x y k. So, once we get the material axis stress stresses in each lamina, now we can assess using appropriate failure theories, but here in this particular case you can see that it is subjected to pure bending and all the layers are 0 degree layers that meaning that their properties are same. Therefore, with reference to the middle this will be the strain variation and same will be the stress variation. So, we can actually find out what is the stresses in the top and bottom layers that will be sufficient to analyze the failure, because the stress will be maximum at the top and the bottom layer. Of course, their signs will be different and uh, we can only uh, assess, because if the first ply fails in this particular situation, the first ply to fail will be either the top or the bottom layer. Okay. Therefore, I am just, we can make for all the 100 layers, but I am just writing the, for the top and the bottom layer. Okay. bottom ply and the top ply. Sigma 1, sigma 2, tau 1, 2. This is 
760 mega Pascal and the top ply is same 760, but it is negative. Sigma 2 in that both the plies are almost 0, very, very small compared to this and so is the shear stress because they all are 0 degree layers. Therefore, there is no coupling subjected to uh, Mx, there is no uh, normal stress and uh, therefore, what is the strength ratio? Now, these two are the extreme stress cases. Okay. So, what is the corresponding strength? Corresponding to this, the strength is because it is positive sigma 1 T u and this is nothing but 1500 mega Pascal. Corresponding to this, what is the corresponding strength sigma 1 C u, this is nothing but given as 1200 mega Pascal. Okay. So, what is the strength ratio? It is obvious that because the stress here is much less, so this plies will not fail. Okay. What is the strength ratio? Strength ratio here is it's roughly 0 0.5 and here it is uh, 760 by 1200, this is roughly 0 0.63. Okay. Therefore, this is the highest strength ratio. That means, if we keep on increasing the moment, if at all it fails, it will fail here first, but it is far away from the failure because only when it is 1, it will fail. Now, it is only 6.63. Uh, okay. So, what does it imply? It implies that it implies that it is not only safe, in fact, thickness could be further reduced thickness could be further reduced. Okay. That means, we can still uh, reduce the number of plies of graphite epoxy. So, uh, ideally uh, maybe suppose we can instead of instead of 100 layers, we can actually select maybe safely 70 okay and then if it is if if we take 70 layers that leads to thickness will be 70 into 0.125 this comes out to be 8.75 mm Okay. So, we can see that uh, 0 0.70, I mean 70 layers of graphite epoxy which uh, translates to a thickness of 8.75, which is much less than the, uh, I mean half of the thickness of the aluminum plate would suffice. You can still uh, do the analysis and see that the, it is safe okay. or else we can, what we can also do is instead of uh, reducing the, because uh, instead of reducing the thickness further say maybe we can use glass epoxy, because glass epoxy the strength is less compared to graphite epoxy. Therefore, thickness will be slightly more compared to graphite epoxy, but then in terms of cost, the cost of uh, cost may be less. Therefore, we will have to uh, take a decision whether we should go with graphite epoxy or glass epoxy. So, there is no single, I mean there could be number of uh, solutions to this kind of problem and you will have to really look for the optimum one depending upon different constraint. May, maybe in this case, if we have to minimize the cost, we will have to take a decision whether we should go with 70 layers of graphite epoxy or maybe 80 layers of glass epoxy and then take a decision. However, from the strength point of view, this is also safe. Okay. So, now let us see what is the weight savings. Okay. what is the weight saving of this modified design. Now, for aluminum, 
what is the mass of the aluminum plate? Length into breadth into thickness is the volume into density. So, length is uh, 100 centimeter that is 0.1 meter, breadth is 0.1 meter, thickness is 0 0.025 meter, 0 0.25 25 mm therefore, 0 0.025 meter and the density of aluminum was as per the table it was 2600 kg per meter cube. Therefore, this gives us a mass of 0.65 kg for aluminum. Similarly, for graphite epoxy length and breadth remain same. Now, what is this graphite epoxy? Say 0, 70 graphite epoxy. So, therefore, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and the thickness is 0 0.0875 0 okay, into the uh, density of graphite epoxy is 1600. So, this translates to 0.14 kg. Therefore, percentage weight saving point six five. So, this is seventy roughly seventy eight percent. Okay. So, this is how the modified design it not only reduces the thickness, it also reduces the weight by uh, 78 percent, but again this may not be the optimum design because the cost is also involved. So, we will have to maybe we can next we can check with glass epoxy and uh, come out with a solution which is also safe, which will also lead to some uh, weight savings, but maybe the cost will be even less. So, we will have to really look for the optimum solution. Okay. Next, uh, we will take another problem say this a drive shaft all of you may be knowing in automobile uh, the drive shaft actually transfers power from the front engine to the rear wheel differential okay. uh, generally made of steel and uh, has the following dimensions. It is a hollow shaft with inner radius of 48 millimeter, outer radius 50 millimeter and thickness is 2 millimeter. Okay. Now, the torque to be transmitted is 550 Newton meter and it has to operate with a factor of safety of 3. Okay. Then it must withstand torsional buckling. It also its first natural frequency in bending must be more than 80 hertz. I think you understand these two implications. Uh, torsional buckling many of you may not be knowing that is why I have taken this figure from in actually Suppose this is a hollow shaft, if you subject it to torsion, there is local buckling like this. As you know, that the pure shear could actually be looked at as equal and opposite uh, normal stresses at an angle of 45 degree. Therefore, there is the, the compression stress actually causes buckling, and if, if, a, if it is thin and subjected to torsion it might buckle. Now, whether it will buckle or not that is decided by its stiffness, uh, how strong it is, it can resist buckling or not. Okay. Also, I think most of you know uh, that uh, whenever a shaft is actually rotating, uh, its bending vibration, uh, 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 I mean the, the first natural frequency, uh, in this case it is told that it should be greater than 80 hertz. That means, the forcing frequency should not be near to the first natural frequency in order to avoid resonance. Okay. So, here it is given that it should be more than 80 hertz. So, this to check should be uh, seen whenever uh, we design this drive shaft. Now, this drive shaft is already there made of steel. Now, uh, it is required to uh, I mean it is required to be replaced by graphite epoxy or glass epoxy. Why? The reason is that one is of course, the there is a need to reduce the weight and because of its non corrosiveness okay the if we make it with uh, graphite epoxy or glass epoxy it's i mean it is resistant to corrosion so let us see 
that how to go about it. Okay. Now, given that you have uh, graphite epoxy and glass epoxy with uh, lamina is available with 0 degree plus minus 45 degree and 90 degree and the ply thickness is 0.125 mm and again as usual the defined properties for graphite epoxy, glass epoxy and steel are given here. Okay. So, to start with uh, let us see first uh, that uh, this drive shaft suppose this is a drive shaft. Suppose this is the this is the hollows. So the outer radius is this inner radius R i. The outer radius is R naught. Okay, uh, given this R naught is equal to fifty mm. And uh, R naught is equal to 50 mm, and R i is 48 mm. Okay, it's given, and therefore the thickness thickness is equal to 2 mm. Therefore, thickness is equal to 2 mm. Okay. Now the torque to be transmitted is. 550 Newton meter, but it has to operate with a factor of safety of 3. Okay. Given that the shear strength of steel is 80 mega Pascal okay. and it has to withstand uh, the torsional buckling as well as its first natural frequency in bending must be more than 80 hertz. Okay. Now, uh, properties are given. Now, let us see that for steel, this is this is made of steel. Let us first check whether this, uh, these dimensions are safe for, with steel or not. So, we know that maximum shear stress induced due to torsional moment T is given by T by J into R naught for a hollow shaft, where J is the polar moment of inertia which is pi by 2 R, R naught to the power 4 minus R i to the power 4. Okay. And uh, in this case R naught and R i we know and then T is also known. Okay. So, uh, considering a factor of safety of 3, that means the design torque is actually 3 times that of 550. So, we can find out that tau max is actually comes out to be 55.7 Newton per millimeter square mega Pascal and therefore, this is less than 80 mega Pascal and hence it is safe. So, the design torque is therefore, the design torque is 550 into 3 Newton meter. Okay. So, if you put here, if you put this here, we get that the maximum stress induced in the material is much less than the shear strength and therefore, it is safe. From the strength point of view, it is safe. Then it has to withstand the uh, uh, I mean the torsional buckling. Now, all of you know that critical buckling load for Euler column buckling. Similarly, there are expressions for torsional buckling. Okay. Now, critical torsional buckling moment. A T B is given by for a hollow shaft it is 2 pi R m square 
into T is the thickness. These are empirical relations are there. Uh, I have taken it from Coase book uh, into E, T is the Young's modulus of the material of the shaft and this is T by R m. Two third. Okay. So when we put these values here, R m is equal to R naught plus R i by two. Therefore, this is point zero four nine. Okay, meter. So when you put these values, E is equal to E is two hundred. Giga Pascal and T is there. Uh, so, we know therefore, what we get from here is when we put this, we get T B comes out to be Newton meter, which is much more than the design. Therefore, that it is safe with critical, I mean it will not undergo torsional buckling. Okay. We can also check the bending vibration. Uh, bending vibration first natural frequency is given by F naught is equal to pi by 2 E i by m l to the power 4, where m is the mass per unit length. In this case, what is the mass per unit length? Mass of this pi, the cross sectional area is r naught square minus r i square into density is the mass per unit length into length is the total mass therefore mass per unit length. So, we can calculate the mass per unit length and i is the second moment i is pi by 4 r naught to the power 4 minus r i to the power 4. So, when you put all this here and l is the length of the shaft is given which is 1.48 meter. Okay. When you put all this, we get F naught comes out to be, uh, when you put these values, F naught comes out to be 125 hertz and which is of course, greater than 80 hertz. Therefore, it is also safe, safe from the bending frequency point of view. That means, the chances of resonance is uh, uh, avoided. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the design of the shafts by uh, graphite epoxy. Okay. So, using, so let us take graphite epoxy as the material instead of glass, I mean instead of steel. We have the choice of graphite epoxy or glass epoxy. Let us start with graf graphite epoxy. Now, the question is what will be the stacking sequence? We have uh, with us 0 degree, 90 degree and plus minus 45 degree. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, what are the constraints? One thing is that it has to be, it has to withstand torsional moment. Therefore, it must have good torsional rigidity. Okay, that means uh, torsional rigidity must be. That means it must have good shear modulus. And we know that plus minus 45 degree lamina if you remember in one of the previous classes we have discussed that the, the shear modulus is maximum for plus minus 45 degree. Therefore, this will help us uh, I mean this will resist the torsional uh, moment. Okay. Now, for a composite drive shaft for a composite hollow shaft or drive shaft the critical torsional buckling uh, moment is 
Again, this is an empirical, uh, there are many such relations. This I have taken from Cos book. Uh, these are empirical relations based on experimental results. into E x into E y cube to the power 1 by 4 into T by R m, R m is the mean radius 2 by C. Okay. Now, you can clearly see that the critical buckling load, buckling moment actually depends on E x and more significantly on E y. Therefore, there must be lamina which could resist, uh, which have stiffness in the y and x direction. So, it comes from 0 degree and 90 degree lamina. So, we must have 0 and 90 also for shear, we must have plus minus 45 for this critical buckling, uh, uh, torsional buckling, we must have 0 and 90, more importantly 90. Also, that uh, for a composite uh, drive shaft, uh, the first natural frequency of bending vibration is pi by 2 under root E x i by m L 4. Therefore, you can clearly see that the first natural frequency depends upon E x. Therefore, we must have some 0 degree plies. So, in this when we uh, decide the uh, stacking sequence, we have to have plus minus 45 degree, we must have 0 degree, we must also have 90 degree plus. So, what we do is we, uh, we choose based on this discussion. So, we choose 0, we choose plus minus 45, we choose 90 and then a symmetric laminate. If you remember, this is a quasi isotropic laminate. that means under in plane load it behaves like isotropic okay so how many plies are there it has eight plies therefore what is the thickness thickness is equal to 8 into 0.125 that means 1 mm okay this is the thickness. So, R naught is fixed, R naught is 0 0.05 meter, thickness is 0 0.001 meter, therefore, R i is 0 0.049 meter. Now, we have a 8 ply laminate and what is the load? It is subjected to n x y okay, because this is subjected to torsional shear, this is subjected to torsional shear. Okay. Now, you will see that this torsional moment T is nothing but if tau x y is the average shear stress multiplied by the area is the shear force. Okay, multiplied by the mean radius is the torque, okay, torsional moment. Now, this we can write as tau x y into pi into r naught plus r i into r naught minus r i into r m. Okay. So, this r naught plus r i is nothing but T and this R naught plus R i is nothing but twice R m. Therefore, this is tau x y into T into twice pi R m square. Now, if you remember in classical lamination theory, what is tau x y into T? This is nothing but n x y because n x y is the shear force per unit width. Okay? So, tau x y into t is nothing but n x y. Therefore, n x y is equal to 
t divided by twice pi r m square. So, when we put these values, we have now what is the value of r m? Now, t is known, okay. design torque t is 3 into 550 Newton meter. Okay. So, r m is 0 0.0495 Okay, and uh, this comes out to be then n x comes out to be roughly one lakh nine thousand three hundred. So we take this as Newton per meter. We take this as uh, say one lakh ten thousand Newton per meter. So the problem is now we have a laminate. we have a laminate which is subjected to only what is this laminate 0 plus minus 45 90 graphite epoxy which is subjected to only n x y okay all other n x n y m x m y m x y is equal to 0. Okay. So, we can analyze this now where the ply thickness T p is equal to 0 0.125 mm. We have the properties u 1 e 2 nu 1 2 g 1 to T p and along with this the stacking sequence therefore, we can compute a b b d matrix okay. and we have n m. So, I think we have done a good number of problems how to analyze a laminate therefore, from this now we can actually analyze the safety whether a ply fails or not. Okay. So, for this and from this ABBD matrix we can find out what is the equivalent extensional or flexural Young's modulus in this case it is 69 mega Pascal E y is also sorry giga Pascal 69 giga Pascal you can see why E x and E y are same here because it is a quasi isotropic laminate therefore, E x and E y are same it behaves like an isotropic under in plane loading. So, once we uh, analyze this we can see that uh, we can now list the stresses after doing the analysis we can find out like as usual we can I mean we can do not say 0, 45, minus 45, 90 okay. and we can list all the stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, tau 1, 2 okay. and you, you, you do this and uh, you can see that this is almost 0, this is almost 0, this is around 28 all in mega Pascal and uh, this is uh, 36 uh, this is uh, th minus the yeah this is uh, 36 yeah this is 14 and this is 14 this is 28 again okay and So, this is 360 uh, okay, 0. So, what happens is uh, what is the uh, strength ratio for this sigma, sigma 2 the corresponding strength is sigma 2 T u which is 40 therefore, it gives a gives us a strength ratio of 0.35 for this sorry this is uh, not here 
this is 0, this is 0, 0, this is 28. Okay. For this, the corresponding strength is 70. So, 28 by 70 gives us 0.4. Okay. Therefore, this is the strength ratio. Maximum strength ratio is at the uh, at this. Okay, so but you can see that this is 0.4. That means it is far away from the failure. It will not fail. No plow will fail under this. Therefore, what that implies is that we can still reduce the number of plies, or because uh, uh, the strength ratio is very less, we can actually go for glass epoxy laminate and check with that. But for the time being, what we can do is. Suppose we continue with if, if we look at this laminate, it is safe from the strength point of view, but whether it satisfies the other condition that means what is the uh, fundamental uh, I mean the first natural frequency in bending. Let us see this is E x i by m l 4. Okay. So, we can find out the values of i and we can find out the value of m like the earlier case and we can see that this comes out to be. 164 hertz, which is of course more than 80 hertz, and therefore this condition is also satisfied. Okay, and what about the buckling? So the critical torsional buckling moment is twice pi r m square into t into 0.272 uh, into uh, e x e x e y to the power 3 1 by 4 as I told these are uh, empirical relations. Okay. Uh, there are such relations available in the literature I have taken it from course book. So, if you put this you know all these values now therefore, if you put this you get this as Newton meter which is greater than the design moment 515. Okay. Therefore, this is also safe against torsional buckling. Okay. Now, so we can say that this is a 0 plus minus 45 90 symmetric graphite epoxy is a feasible solution which actually uh, reduces the weight. You can now try to see what is the weight saving like the earlier case we can also find out here the weight savings, but what we have seen here is that this is far stronger than required. Okay. So, maybe we can try with glass epoxy and do the same exercise and then we can take a decision whether we should go for glass epoxy or graphite epoxy because of the fact that the glass epoxy the cost will be much less compared to that of the graphite epoxy. So, I leave it to you, you can actually try with glass epoxy with the same quasi isotropic laminate and check that that is also safe or not. In that case, the cost of uh, uh, glass epoxy is almost 2.5 times less than that of graphite epoxy and you can compare the cost. So, what we will have to compare? We will have to see that it is safe from the strength point of view. It is it, it satisfies that uh, that it does not uh, buckle under torsional buckling and it is uh, uh, the first natural frequency of bending vibration must be more than 80 hertz and its cost should be minimum and there should be sufficient weight savings. So, we can compare all these parameters and then take a decision to arrive at an optimum design, but here we have just discussed the methods how to go about it. Okay. So, uh, I will stop here today. Thank you.